Hello learners, so far you must have discussed and read about the various qualitative tools and techniques which are available for assessment of school students on scholastic as well as co-scholastic areas. There are several tools which are available for this purpose. For instance, we have portfolio assessment, assignment, project, presentation, class test, observation, role play and rating scale also. Though there are many more tools which are available for the teacher to use in her classroom. Today we will be specifically discussing rating scale as one of the tools for assessing learners performance. You know what assessment is? Assessment gives you information of what is the progress of your learners, how far they have been able to achieve and realize the learning outcomes of the subject which you have taught and discussed with them. Rating scale provides you one avenue of assessing their progress on a different type of tool. Let us learn more about the scale. Many a time you must have found that the parents ask, is my child showing interest in games? Does she dance well? What about the overall performance of my son in science? Or your headmaster and principal might be asking you, are you satisfied in the cleanliness habits of your students in your class? How was Sunita's exhibits in the inter-school science exhibition? Was it appreciated by the visitors? To what degree? And so on and so forth. Now your response to these queries must be something like these. Just average, excellent, above average, satisfactory, most of the time, seldom, never and so on. Do you realize that you are using qualitative terms to decide the performance of a particular child on a particular attribute of a behavior. So often we find that we are rating the performances or attributes in a rating scale which is ranging from extremely negative level that is maybe not satisfactory to extremely high level that is excellent, remarkable, highly satisfactory and others. And the middle one often remains maybe seldom, not sure or others such as this. Now rating scales resemble checklists to a certain degree but it is used when finer descriptions are needed. In a checklist what do you do? You merely indicate the presence or absence of a particular characteristic or attribute through a checklist. It's either yes or no. It exists or it doesn't exist. But in a rating scale you have an opportunity to rate to what level is that particular attribute present or absent in an individual. So it is giving you a chance of being individual. It is enabling the assessment to be a little bit more individualized. So you get a chance and opportunity to indicate the status or level of quality or what is being rated. Now we look at uh, the rating scales, when do we use it? We usually use rating scales when we want to make qualitative judgment about the extent to which a behavior is present. How far is the child exhibiting that behavior? If I say that okay, a particular student or student A is responsible, then what makes me say that, that he is a responsible child? I will be able to say that if he is submitting his assignments on time, if he is punctual, if he is regular to the school, isn't it? These are some of the attributes which are defining his quality as being a responsible child. So, rating scale consists of a set of characteristics or qualities which are to be judged by using a systematic procedure. Now, generally we use two types of rating scales. So, we have the numerical and graphic rating scales. Let's see what are these two. Now, the numerical rating scales what happens that you have a sequence of numbers which is assigned to descriptive categories and the rater has to mark a number to indicate the degree to which a characteristic is present. So if I say a child is punctual, so I will either, you know, in a rater of 1, 2 and 3, I might put him on 1 when I say that is always he is punctual, 2 when most of the time he is present and 3 when seldom or never, he is never present in the class. Right. So you, the teacher is getting an opportunity to describe the particular characteristic of an individual. Now the graphic rating scales, it helps you or it provides a different way of representing the same fact. So a set of categories are described at certain points along the line of a continuum. And the rater has to then mark his or her judgment at any location on that line. If we look at the advantages of using a rating scale, then one of the most 
significant advantage of rating scale is that it can be used for behaviors which are not easily measured by other means. So, when you talk about values, it is very difficult to measure values by a paper pencil test or by simply observations. So, a rating scale when it is used along with observation, it gives more authenticity to the observation and recording of a particular behavior or changes in behavior pattern which are happening in the learners. Then another advantage of rating scale is that it is very easy and it is very quick to complete. And in fact, the learners or the teacher who is observing uh, the learners behavior, they are able to rate at a very uh, very uh, with, a very, with a great fluency and they are able to do it in a much uh, easier manner. Another advantage is that the user can apply knowledge about the child from other times as well. It is comparatively less effort required is, is required in creating and framing uh, and the execution of a rating scale. Another advantage is that it is easy to design using consistent descriptors. So, some of the descriptors which are commonly used are always, sometimes, rarely or never. It can be used to describe the child's gradual steps towards understanding or mastery. Many a time you must have seen at elementary level when they have this report card or the assessment card which they have. So, uh, they uh, list down the various uh, behaviors which are expected of a child and the changes which are expected in that behavior. So, for example, the child is able to uh, identify the colors okay and then the uh, uh, the rater has to rate it as most of the time sometimes or never so the child's behavior is uh, getting assessed in a very gradual manner so in the first term if it is no or never then try it possible that if the progress has been made then in the second term it will move to most of the time or uh, more frequently now the disadvantages of rating scales are also many it is a very sensitive tool and hence it is highly subjective in nature. So, who is rating the performance also affects the assessment of a learner. So, the rater and bias is a very common problem which has been seen and observed in, a, in the use of rating scales. Now, the raters may at many times rate a child on the basis of their previous interactions or on an emotional rather than an objective basis. So, it is quite possible that a child has not behaved uh, appropriately in your class on a certain day and the next day you are asked to rate his uh, behavior on a certain uh, aspect. So, your recent interaction with the child might affect the overall assessment or rating of that individual. So, this is another disadvantage of using a rating scale. Now, another thing which is a technical problem with the rating scale is the ambiguous terms which are usually used which makes them unreliable. So, raters are likely to differ uh, in their definition of uh, what is the interpretation of the rating when we say sometimes. Sometimes means what? Does it mean that the child has come uh, in the class 100 percent or just 80 percent or 70 percent or a 50 percent is also sometimes. So, even this inter rater difference in the uh, meaning which is assigned to the terms also leads to uh, creating unreliability in the results which come out of rating scale assessment. Now, look at this sample. This is a rating scale which is uh, judging the participation of a student in school activities. So, you will find that whenever you are preparing a rating scale, you have to include these particularities. You have to first of all give the instructions as to what that scale going to assess. Next, you have to describe the pointers. What does each point indicate? And then you have to list the various attributes. Now, the listing of the attributes should be grammatically accurate. It should be unambiguous, simple, straight, precise and very clear. So, that whoever is rating the performance of the child does not get confused in the interpretation of these sentences. Now, a few more guidelines which uh, a teacher should always keep in mind and abide by whenever they are using the rating scale for assessment of a learner. First and foremost is that you should pre-inform the learner 
about the criteria or attributes which are to be which will be observed and on which the assessment will be made. So, for instance, if I have uh, a presentation to happen in my classroom and if I want if I will be rating the performance of my learners on that presentation, then I have to tell them before that that look these are the criteria on which I will be assessing your presentation. So, your criteria could be that you are assessing the confidence level, you are assessing the content, its relevance, its organization, then the fluency of expression, then uh, the examples or the illustrations which have been made. So, whatever your criteria or attributes of that particular aspect is, it should be pre-informed to the learners so that they are pre uh, they are more aware of what they will be assessed on and they will work towards it. It will in fact, if uh, we can say it can have the washback effect of uh, assessment where when the learners know that yeah, this is what they will be evaluated on, they will work towards improving those areas and that is what we want, that will what lead to the realization of our learning outcomes. Now another thing is that once you have implemented, once you have assessed the learners on this rating scale, you should share the analysis with the learner as well as the parents. So prompt feedback must be given so that if there are some improvements which are desired of the learner or there are some changes which are to be brought about by the parents, then it can be made on time so that the learner's gradual process of growth and development is not stopped, rather it is better facilitated. With this we come to the end of this section, we will meet again, thank you.